Hawaii, our enchanted isles. All it took to visit this paradise of the Pacific was a five-day trip from San Francisco. Why so long? Because this was the 1930s, and the only way to get to Hawaii was by steamship. Welcome on board Matson Cruise Lines and its fleet of white ships, the Malolo, Mariposa, Monterey, Matsonia, and Lurleen. When these ships arrived in Honolulu, everyone turned out for what was called boat days. The ship would arrive from the west coast. It was a big community event and people gathered at the beach and along the, the harbor and boats went out into the harbor to greet these beautiful ships and uh, passengers you know stood along along the rails as the ship slowly came in, in towards the Aloha Tower. These were the glorious days of open ocean travel all detailed in Duncan's new book The White Ships 1927 through 78 The Elegant Years. You had you know people dressed in black tie for dinner and ball gowns, but they did also emphasize a, a leisurely lifestyle aboard the ships where you could go out to the pool and um, you know just sit on your deck chair if you wanted and enjoy the, the balmy breezes coming off the ocean. From the moment you boarded these ships it was a very welcoming and happy thing. You know everyone was, was handing out drinks and putting lays on people's necks and right, right away they would organize you know welcome aboard champagne party with the captain and the emphasis was on you know being, you know, being friendly with people and a really nice time was, was had by all. First class all the way, that's just how he wanted it. Captain William Matson left his home in Sweden at age 13 to sail the world, eventually settling in San Francisco. He sailed to Hilo Town in 1882 and decided to open a West Coast cargo shipping business. He became friends with Klaus Spreckels, who financed his largest vessel, the Falls of Clyde. Klaus Spreckels got into the sugar business over on Maui and had a town named after him, Spreckelsville. During that time, Klaus had a small private boat named Lurleen. Captain Matson liked the name so much that he used it both for his daughter and one of his ships, which today is the most fondly remembered of all the white ships. I think anybody who traveled on the white ships is going to have a nostalgic connection how beautiful it was just to sail to a place like Hawaii. To arrive on a, a ship like that was just, just amazing. And the arrival was one of the main attractions. They had this you know, incredible show at the, the dock for people coming in with music and hula dancers and the Royal Hawaiian Band playing. You know, Hawaii quickly became a very desirable place to, to come. It had obvious appeal just because of this. Many celebrities were seen getting off the white ships. And while here, visitors took in all Hawaii had to offer. Each week when the ship would come into port, it was a huge economic boost for, for the state. Um, not only because of the tourist dollars, but because the ships were carrying you know, items to, to bring to Hawaii for, you know, uh, whether it was just a, a refrigerator or whatever, it was, it was a really necessary link. Departure was again a very festive occasion. Long paper streamers were tossed out as if to hold on to Hawaii for just a bit longer. People would, you know, throw them over the railing to all the people on the dock below. So after about, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of this, there was a massive tangle of, of paper between the, the dock and the ship. And as the ship backed out of the dock, then all the streamers would tear apart and it was a very, very exciting spectacle and coins would be tossed out to swimmers below. There were uh, local boys, they would, would dive into the water next to the ship and hold out their hand hoping that a passenger might throw over some change into the water. Probably was a little bit dangerous because they were still swimming around the ship as it backed out of the, from the dock and I, I'm sure nowadays that sort of uh, behavior would not be, be cool. After the war, the site of the Lurleen confirmed that peace and visitors would be returning to Hawaii. But it wouldn't be long before another mode of transportation took over, and some years later, Matson quit the passenger business. To their credit, Matson Line sailed for 50 years with no distress calls, no critical emergencies. The White Ships, 1927 through 78, a nostalgic journey into Hawaii's history.
it's nice to sort of think back that, that there was once a beautiful and romantic way to, to travel and maybe one day there might be something like that again. Thank you.